How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and we are in a Pokemon series on my channel. I'm not a Pokemon channel. This is a short five to ten video series that I've been doing on Pokemon cards because it's something that I personally grew up with but didn't really know about later in life and now I'm kind of learning about it and I'm more than happy to share the information that I've gathered. So somebody else out there who might have Pokemon cards or you might be out and about and stumble upon Pokemon cards at a garage sale, flea market or a thrift store, storage auction or wherever, knowing some basics could make you a lot of money if you have the right cards. Before we get into the video, if you haven't already, please give it a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. I want you guys to know enough stuff to do damage if you stumble upon a binder of cards at a flea market or a garage sale or if you have some at your house or know somebody that has some. We're gonna be focusing more on the vintage side of things, things that are about 20 to 21 years old. I know there's money in the modern sets as well, but I don't know that much about it. And, but we're not really gonna be focusing on the modern stuff and I'll be first to admit, I don't know a lot about Pokemon cards, especially the modern stuff. The little bit that I have acquired and I'm presenting in this video, I have recently acquired from researching a lot of the vintage cards that I actually grew up playing with, but then kind of fell out of the hobby and never got back into it. There will be an index in the description if you want to check out a certain part of the video, feel free to check that out. What cards are, what cards to look for? What cards are like the big bangers that you're looking for? And then how to tell the difference between some of the different older sets. Secondly, we're gonna go over like the grading. I didn't know anything about grading and now I know a little bit about grading. So we're gonna talk about some of the stuff about grading and condition. Thirdly, we're gonna talk about why they're valuable. How do you figure out the value of them? Lastly and fourthly, we're gonna talk about where to sell them. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about something super beginner. Protecting the cards, something that I didn't even know about up until I was posting my collection that I have on YouTube and on Instagram. When I bought, when I bought these cards, they were just the card sandwiched with another card like this. Two cards in a case like that sandwiched together that's how the previous owner stored the cards, which is completely incorrect. So I had to carefully take out the cards and hope that they didn't scratch, even though I felt like they were scratching when I was opening them. Once I got all the cards out of the cases, once I got all the cards out of the cases, I went to Target and got these penny sleeves. Every single card goes in a penny sleeve, and then the card goes in one of these plastic top loaders like that. One to a top loader instead of two, it gets kind of crowded in there. And that is how the cards should have been stored. Anything you want to protect goes immediately in a penny sleeve and then it either goes into a top loader or it goes into a binder. You don't just leave them around the house or put them in boxes. That's how the cards get damaged, which we're going to talk about later on in the video when we talk a little bit more about condition. Now that I got a little bit of the storage of the cards out of the way, let's get into what cards are we looking for. And as I said earlier, we're gonna be primarily targeting vintage cards. The first set, the second and third sets to come out, the fourth set, and maybe a little bit of the fifth set, which I really don't have any on hand, but still worth mentioning because it's like a lot of the iconic cards from the first set. There's a lot of information. Buckle up, get ready to go. Hit the thumbs up if you haven't already, and let's get into it. Uh, how do you tell if the card is vintage? So if you look at the very, very bottom, there will be some copyright dates. And this says copyright 95, 96, 98, and 99 for Wizards of the Coast. So the first set that came out is called the base set. If you look at the bottom right of the card, it will say a number out of 102, meaning that there was 102 cards in the set and that's how you know which card in the set you have. You might have one out of 102. Uh, this Blastoise is two out of 102, and this Zapdos is 16 out of 102. Each card is numbered in that base set. And then after the base set came out, a set called Jungle or Fossil, I don't remember exactly which one came out. They were very close in proximity, I think within a half a year or maybe a couple of months. The Fossil set will have a little skeleton hand right here, right here about in the middle of the card on the right side, a little, and down in the bottom right hand corner, it is a set out of 62 cards. 
when you see a jungle card, it'll have this little flower here, and the set will be out of 64 cards in the bottom right hand corner. After Fossil and Jungle came out, the next one I think was Team Rocket. I do have a Japanese Team Rocket Charizard. The way that we know that it's Rocket is this R right here, and then on the American cards, it will have the number out of 82. Most of them will be called like dark, like right here is Dark Magneton. This one's a Dark Charizard. After Team Rocket came Base Set 2, which is indicated, which is indicated on the card with this Pokeball and a two next to it. And in the bottom right hand corner, it is a number out of 130 cards. One of the dangerous things about Pokemon cards, um, they printed a lot of the same artwork, the same style of card on a later set, but that later set isn't worth as much as the original one. So knowing how to differentiate the sets is crucial when you're valuing the cards, as you'll see later on in this video. There's also Japanese cards, which will be in Japanese, the back of the cards will look different. And there's a lot more sets after base set two, like gym sets, which will have a little gym character in the bottom right hand corner. But we're not really going to talk about those. We're pretty much stopping at base set two. Anytime you want to identify a later set, you can Google the fractional numbers in the bottom right hand corner, as well as the name of the card. That'll give you the set. That way you can look up and value that card a little bit more in detail if you want to. So to recap again, base set fossil, Jungle, Team Rocket, and Base Set 2. Those are the five sets that we are going to be going over. Now to circle back to the original Base Set, there were variations in the Base Set print. Who would have guessed it that the first print of the Base Set is known as the First Edition Base Set? And that First Edition is easily recognizable by this First Edition stamp right here. Unfortunately, this Machamp card is the only First Edition card that I have to use as an example, but every card in the Base set was ran as a first edition. The Machamp, I think, was a weird misprint where all of them came out first edition or a bunch of them were printed and they were included in this beginner's pack. I remember buying that beginner's pack because it had a first edition Machamp in it. I was like, wow, first edition, you're guaranteed a very strong card if you buy that beginner set and I had bought that and got a first edition Machamp, I was super stoked. From my understanding, first editions are worth the most because it was a very limited run. It was the earliest, it was like the OG. So those first edition ones of the base set are the ones are going to bring you the top dollar out of the base set. The next time the base set was printed, they got rid of that first edition stamp but they were printing these cards that were called shadowless. I have an entire video showing how to tell the difference between a shadow and a shadowless card. I will put a link to that in the description for you guys to check out. But I will quickly show you the tips that I go over in that video. This is a shadowless Blastoise where there is no shadow on this box right here. The HP is a thinner red font and the copyright down here has a 99 in the copyright date. This is a non-shadowless or a shadowed or a unlimited Blastoise, so it was the last printing of the base set. As you can see, it has a shadow on the box. The 100 HP is a bolder red font, and down here, the Game Freak copyright, does, it does not have a 99. It just says 1999 Wizards, which is Wizards of the Coast. I do recommend checking out that video. I go up close and I give you guys a quiz about Shadowless versus not Shadowless, which I think is very valuable because there's a huge difference between the prices of shadowed cards versus shadowless cards. So it's definitely something you should check out. So in the base set, there is first edition, which is worth the most. Then there's shadowless, which is worth the second most, but doesn't have that first edition stamp. And then there is unlimited, which they brought the shadow to the cards, which can still be worth money, but it's not worth as much as the first two in that set. When it comes to Fossil, Jungle, and Rocket, they did release first editions for those sets, which are worth more than the non-first edition of those three sets. To my understanding, Base Set 2 did not come out with a first edition, but the Base Set 2 cards with the little Pokeball in the two look very similar other than that Pokeball in the two and the little details in the bottom right hand corner in the copyright look very similar to the untrained eye as the base set, the fossil and the jungle sets. 
So you could buy a card that isn't necessarily as valuable thinking that it was an earlier card if you didn't know how to t differentiate between those cards. Base set can still be good. Any set could still be good, but you really need to figure out how to differentiate between the cards and that is the details that I hope you just learned in this section of the video. So Japanese cards, there are a lot of Japanese sets. I don't know all the Japanese sets. So the Japanese cards do have a little number in the bottom right hand corner. And if you don't know the name of the Pokemon, you might be in trouble. You might have to ask somebody to help you. You're gonna wanna Google the name of the Pokemon plus that number or throw that into an eBay search. And you should be able to find that card uh, in order to look up the value of that specific Japanese set because you can't read the Pokemon names in Japanese. You only can read those numbers. And that's really the only, if you don't know everything about Pokemon cards, uh, you'll have to look them up and figure them out. Now that we've talked about identifying the sets, I wanna talk about kind of more within the sets about the cards. There are three types of cards in the set. There are Pokemon, there are energy, and then there are trainers. Some trainers can be worth a lot of money. Some Pokemon can be worth a lot of money. The energies, uh, I'm not really sure. There probably are some energies that are worth some money, but generally they're not gonna be worth as much. Energy cards are used when you're playing to like power up the Pokemon or allow them to use moves. The trainer cards allow things to happen within game. And then the Pokemon are used to deal damage or to defend you, I think, from getting hit. And then the cards themselves are designated common, uncommon, and rare by a symbol in the bottom right hand corner. A star is rare, a square is uncommon, and a circle is common. Those designations have a ratio of like how often they're pulled out of a booster pack, which is an 11 card pack that kids would buy and open back in the day. I think they would contain one rare card, a handful of common cards, and a couple uncommon cards. And although they're called common, uncommon, and rare, just because it's common doesn't mean it's not worth any money, as you will see later on in this video. Holographic or foil cards, or hollow cards, which have a holographic background that is shiny like that. And there are cards that are just like a matte finish, that they don't have any hologram, and they don't have any anything shiny on it. Generally, the holographic cards are more rare, Therefore, they're gonna be worth more money, but there's more that goes into the value of the cards that we're gonna get into later on in the video than just is it holographic or not holographic, but this is just still worth mentioning up front. If you have sealed packs, original sealed packs from those base sets or booster boxes that somebody had away in like a storage locker, those can be worth crazy money because you don't know what cards are inside and the card's condition are probably in amazing condition because they're still in the original package. As a general rule, from my understanding, the iconic Pokemon are the ones that are pulling the craziest money. For instance, Charizard, he's a fire-breathing dragon. Everybody always loved him, he was powerful. He was the highest form of from one of the starter Pokemon from the Game Boy game. He was on the front of the game for the red version. So Charizard, just being an iconic character, has pulled some of the most, if not, I think he's the Holy Grail card for a first edition base set Charizard. So those iconic Pokemon are definitely ones that I've been seeing trending in a really, really expensive direction. And when I mean iconic Pokemon, I mean ones that are really old and just like really popular. For instance, Pikachu, he was a common card, but the old first edition ones in really good condition are worth a lot of money. Charmander, which is the Pokemon that turns into Charizard, worth good money. Squirtle, the Pokemon that turns into Blastoise, worth good money. Bulbasaur, the one that eventually turns into Venusaur, worth good money. So some of the iconic Pokemon, if you, they were like the first, they were the most pushed, they were the most played, they're the most known. I feel like those ones tend to do better than other cards in general. Other Pokemon, other cards from these sets will be worth money. D totally a general rule from just what I've seen. The iconic ones are great, but not to say that the non-iconic ones are not worth money because they will be worth money as well. The market's the market. Some people want certain Pokemon. They collect collect all of the Clefairies, some people collect all the Chanseys, some people collect all the Fire Pokemon. It's not to say that just the iconic ones are worth money. Other ones will be worth money, but it, it does depend on a lot of different factors. Brings me to my next topic, and that is condition is king. 
And what do I mean by condition is king? So the way trading cards kind of work are there are graded cards and ungraded or raw cards. And the graded cards are the ones that people pay money to send into a company like PSA or Beckett, which are the top two. There are some other ones. People send the cards in. They look at them under magnifying glasses and microscopes and check off all these things and, and grade the card based off of all these checklists and condition and centering and scratches and corners and all that stuff. And then they put it in an acrylic thing and grade it and barcode it and document it in their archives as that is their grade of that card. I think their grades go from one to 10 and a 10 is the perfect mint gem card and the 10 is going to be worth more than the same card in a nine which is going to be worth more than the same card in a an eight which is going to be worth more than the same card in a seven and so on and so forth the condition is king when it comes to graded cards but the condition is also king when it comes to ungraded cards so when you post a card on ebay if it's a trashed first edition card it may or may not still have some value based off of the market for that card but if it's a trashed card, it's not necessarily going to sell for as much money for a less trashed card or a not trashed card. It will sell for probably sell for less money. And that's something you definitely need to take into consideration when finding cards, when selling your own cards, not just what card, what set it goes to, but also the condition. Right off the bat, things to look for. Creasing, if the card was bent at any point, that's gonna reduce the value of it. Scratches in the hologram are gonna reduce the value of it. Uh, was it in a protective sleeve in a case, like we were talking about earlier on in this video? Uh, if you look at the back of these cards, the way that they were built, they're not very durable, and a lot of, uh, a lot of the blue ink will chip off of the back as the cards are being used, which is also a factor showing wear and tear, reducing the value of the cards. I think they call it whiting on the back. And the cards that I have, some of them have very, very little whiting on the back. But here is an example of a little bit of whiting you can see up there at the top. Uh, and collectors that are actually super into Pokemon are gonna look at that and take that into consideration when buying the card as well. Certain heavy hitter cards completely beat up can still sell for good money, like a first edition Charizard, you're still gonna sell it if it's completely beat up. And certain common cards that are in gem mint 10 condition, like a common Pikachu, because he's so iconic, could still sell, I think he's hundreds in Gem Mint 10, hundreds of dollars in a nine if you get it graded. Getting cards graded is something that I haven't done yet. I don't have experience with. I've heard from people that it's super backed up right now. It's extremely expensive to get a card back in any reasonable amount of time because so many people are sending their cards in because the market's so crazy right now. Everyone wants to get them graded. Everyone wants to protect their investments, get them graded. And if I do get a card graded, I will make a video of my experience of how to do it in the future. But at this time, I don't have anything graded. From what I've heard, it'll be between like 150 to like $200 to get something back within a reasonable amount of time. So you wouldn't really grade anything right now unless it's a crazy heavy hitter card or stuff that you want to put in the queue and have it, I don't know, six months from now, whenever PSA catches up on their crazy amount of workload that they have. Now that we talked about what cards and card condition, we're going to talk about why are they worth money and how much money are they worth? Why they're worth money is kind of theoretical. It's a worldwide franchise. It's been around for almost 25 years that's penetrated a lot of countries a lot of kids childhoods we've been watching the cartoons we've been playing the cards growing up so there's that nostalgia factor prominent figures like gary vaynerchuk and logan paul are now talking about it pushing it and then there's the math side of it where packs cost so much back in the day and they've appreciated to so much now because certain cards are so rare that a pack is now worth this amount of money because it could pull this card out of it. But the market is what it is. People want the cards. They're now seeing them as investment vehicles. Celebrities are buying them, showing them off on Instagram. And, and that has also trickled down to the common man where everybody wants a little piece of the Pokemon card action, either to collect themselves or to buy it as investment vehicles, buy and sell them to make a little money yourself. So how do you figure out the card's value? First thing I would recommend is using this app called TCG Player. It has a database of all the cards in them. And all you do is put the card on a blank piece of paper, scan it with your phone and it will ding and let you know a relative 
card value. And then you're going to take that information for that card and plug it into eBay and see kind of what the eBay market's looking like. Cause that could, it could be higher on eBay than it says on TCG. And then you can look at it that way. So I would say scan all the cards with TCG, separate the ones you think are worth money and then look those ones individually up on eBay. TCG should give you information such as the set name and the name of the card if it's in a different language. That way you can look that specific card up on eBay and see if it's worth good money. Looking at the eBay active listings, completed listings for that specific card in that specific condition is in my opinion, the best, the easiest way for me because I'm an eBay buyer and seller in order to figure out the market. You can also sell them on Mercari and Facebook Marketplace if that's what you want, but you still need correct information and general market idea in order to post it on Mercari and Facebook proper keywords and title of the card so people can find it. And that I usually find is on eBay because it's just a bigger market. I think it's the strongest market and that's where I've been selling all of my cards with pretty good success. There are some other resources such as PSA.com and PokemonPrices.com. They're a lot more advanced when it comes to data such as population of that PSA or like pull rates and things with like different, it has completely different statistics than just like sale price. So when you're looking up the cards, make sure you're getting the correct set, you're getting the correct card name, you're getting the correct condition that you're looking at, and that will give you a general idea of uh, where to price your cards at. Some people let auctions run and they go crazy with good pictures and let them run. You can figure out the market, put it up and buy it now. There's multiple ways to do it, but just make sure that that you know the exact card that you're looking at and that's where earlier in the video was important, identifying those, those sets, identifying the cards. That is super duper important. And then secondly condition before you sell the cards, which is why we went over that earlier on in the video. So we already kind of touched on this, where to sell them, but eBay is your gold standard. You can sell them on Mercari. You can sell them on OfferUp. You can sell them on Facebook Marketplace locally or shipping them. It's up to you. Just make sure you do your research on eBay. You use the information on identifying the sets that we went over earlier on this video. You use the information on condition. You take good pictures. I will make a video about how I do my eBay research and listings in the future for this series. There are also people that sell cards on Instagram. There's also sites that sell cards. StockX, believe it or not, is now selling PSA graded cards, which is crazy that they're getting into it because they see that there's a market for it. So if StockX is jumping on it, you know something's hot. I know it was a long video, but I hope sharing this information will make your life easier and a little bit more enjoyable when it comes to Pokemon cards. It is by no means an ultimate seller's guide. It's just totally just a crash course. I'm trying to get as much information out that I just learned in the short amount of time. I could very well have misspoke something in this. So if you're a Pokemon person and you're watching this all the way through, I apologize, I'm sorry. I'm not a Pokemon expert, but I do know enough about it to do a little damage at a flea market. So thank you guys so much for watching. Before we go, I wanna recap, drill this into your head one more time, some very important points. Vintage cards, check that copyright date at the bottom. The vintage cards are gonna be your most valuable. Condition is king, PSA being like the super king, and then raw cards, but condition's still important when it comes to raw cards. Use the TCG Player app to figure out if your cards are worth anything, then look them up on eBay. Make sure you are looking at the exact same card in the exact same condition, and you should be able to figure out the market for your cards, and to be able to do some damage at garage sales or flea markets. So thank you guys so much for watching. I know it was a lot of information, but I appreciate you guys sticking to the end. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.